Troopers are searching for three people believed to be involved in a hit and run crash over the weekend. Watch this one here. This happened around 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. FHP responded to the crash there on I-4 where dash cam video shows a Chevy Camaro drive between two cars and then slam into the back of another vehicle. And that caused the vehicles to go off the roadway. Three people inside the Camaro then took off running and were later picked up by another vehicle. Now, believe it or not, nobody reportedly seriously hurt. At the end of the day, it, it was true, truly heartless and, and selfish for all three occupants um, to just leave the scene after the crash without even knowing if that other driver uh, was badly hurt or even, you know, dead. Anyone with information regarding the crash is asked to call FHP or Crimeline. And we begin the News Edge tonight with a Fox 35 News exclusive. A teenager from Sanford narrowly escapes death after being shot in the head just days before she was set to graduate. Layla Bennett was shot back in April while she was just walking through a neighborhood with a friend. And tonight, she's back at home. Her next focus is graduating from high school. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm John Brown. And I'm Luann Sorrell. Layla was shot just a few weeks before her graduation. Fox 35's Randy Hildreth is joining us live from Sanford tonight. So, Randy, Andy, you actually got to sit down with her today. How is she doing? Yeah, good evening to you both. I'm smiling because sitting with Layla tonight was so heartwarming and inspiring. She had a smile on her face the whole time, and you could feel her resilient spirit. Now, here's the thing. That bullet is still in her head, but her mom says every day she is defying odds and making progress. Layla Bennett has no choice but to believe in miracles. She is one. Because I'm shot or even my head, I would be still the hospital. So it's just like things like that just know that there is something. She was in the ICU for nearly a month. Layla was one of two teens shot during a drive by shooting off Scott Drive in April. The other team was grazed. Layla was shot in the head. I thought I did tie because I didn't um, all like I was so um, intubated. It was weeks before her birthday, weeks before her high school graduation. Layla's mom says doctors told her the odds were against her daughter. That the next 24 to 48 hours were going to be critical and that we need a lot of prayers on this one. At last check, Sanford police were still investigating the shooting. Layla's days are filled with physical therapy and speech therapy. She's still working to get mobility in her right arm and strengthen her right leg, but she started to walk at home with a cane for short distances. Mom Nikki Lowe calls her daughter a warrior princess and says each day she lives up to that nickname. Every little thing that you take for granted is huge. As for Layla's message to her shooter. I forgive, forgive. Yeah, and also I woke up Johnsis. Now, Layla has at least one more surgery in the next month. Mom says after that, she will focus on therapy and focus on finishing up those last high school credits so that she can get her diploma. Today, Layla and I talked a lot about her future. She says that she is still considering pursuing a career as a firefighter. Reporting live tonight, Randy Hildreth, Fox 35 News. We want to start with Orange County deputies investigating a deadly shooting. This took place outside an apartment building. A man in his 30s was found dead. Fox 35's Morgan Parrish is live from the sheriff's office for this morning. And Morgan, good morning to you. I know that you're working to learn if deputies have any suspect information at this time, right? Danielle, good morning. That's right. Yeah, so there's still a lot of questions that need answers. Uh, officials aren't releasing too many details at this time, so we are still working to learn who the suspect was, uh, what the motive was, and if there were any others involved. Now, the shooting happened just after 930 last night in the 600 block of Town Square Way. Officials say they arrived on scene responding to a call of a shooting. Uh, when they got there, like you mentioned, they found a man in his 30s who had been shot. Officials say he was pronounced dead at the scene. So again, right now we know this is still all under investigation and like I mentioned, officials aren't releasing too many details at this time. So hopefully we can get some answers later on this morning. For now, we're putting it live in front of the Orange County Sheriff's Office. I'm Morgan Parrish, Fox 35 News. The big story at 530. We have new details tonight in an alleged puppy mill investigation in Brevard County. The sheriff says this is now becoming a nationwide investigation. Fox 35's Esther Bauer is live tonight along Mustang Lane and Esther animal control officers were out there again today for hours. 
I just confirmed with the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. They were not only on site earlier today, they took even more animals off of this property when they were. We have that picture up on your screen where you can see deputies, animal control officers, and their vehicles at this location. Now, the sad part is we can still hear dogs barking behind this fence. Sheriff Wayne Ivey tells us he may need the community to be stepping up and stepping in with fosters as this investigation behind the fence intensifies. Two arrests, more than 50 dogs rescued so far, and an ongoing investigation into an alleged puppy mill in Brevard County. You know, this case is far from over, uh, and I can tell you that uh, we are going to continue to pursue every criminal charge we can. The sheriff says this all started back on July 10th when deputies arrested this woman, Elizabeth Cleveland, and accused her of keeping dogs in deplorable conditions. Some were living under floorboards. Others didn't have food or water according to the sheriff. This week, her husband, Richard Cleveland, was also taken into custody on a $116,000 bond and nearly 150 counts of aggravated animal cruelty and unlawful confinement without food, water, or exercise. The dogs pulled from their homes have been going to shelters and rescues. Sheriff Ivy isn't sure how many dogs will need help in the end and rescues are swamped. It's super important to adopt right now just because we are full. The puppy mill investigation has the SPCA working around the clock to clear out the shelter and help dogs find forever homes. It's heartbreaking. It really does break my heart. Parker is the SPCA's longest resident right now. He's been at the shelter for over a year, had to have his leg amputated because he was hit by a car and is constantly overlooked. He has a heart of gold. Parker needs to find a forever home as soon as possible. And these pups, who are safe from confined cages, probably will too. If you can adopt or foster in any capacity, the time to help is now. There are too many dogs in the shelters these days. They need to get out. They're not supposed to be there. It's and the sheriff says he is working as fast as he can to get search warrants and court documents needed to save every single dogs at these sites. If you're at all interested or willing to consider adopting Parker or becoming a foster or just giving donations, give the SPCA a call or the Brevard County Animal Shelter as soon as possible. Reporting live in Brevard County, Esther Bauer, Fox 35 News. Esther, thank you.